So, um, I had breakfast, at lunch with, uh, with uh, Eric, and he wanted to know what I was going to ask about Groupon, and was a little bit nervous. <laughs> um, and I, at, earlier, I also had breakfast with Andrew Mason, who's your other founder. Um, and I, I, I suggested a line for him um, that he could use whenever anybody asks about uh, Groupon and how it's doing in the stock market, was at least we're not Zynga. Um, but uh, that said, <laughs> or perhaps Facebook, you could move to that one if that doesn't work. Right. But that said, um, it's been a tough IPO, and uh, and I think people want to understand where it is right now. What, what, talk a little bit about where the company is and where you see it going, um, and how um, you know how it's been. What's going on with the the concept of social? It's not just you. It's Facebook, Zynga, Pandora. A lot of the social companies, which were sort of the hot thing, are now maybe not so hot in investors' eyes, at least. Can we take that one? Yeah, sure. So um, you know, I think it, it's been a it's been a uh, certainly a tricky time for all the big social public companies that have gone out. Um, I think, I think um, you know, the markets, as I said you know, the other day, Brad and I did an interview, the markets have just been particularly volatile. And <clears throat> it seems like investors have at times rushed in and couldn't get enough of these companies and at times have gone the other way. And, 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 and uh, the markets move so fast these days that people come in and out pretty quickly. So... You know, I don't know. I, I, I had. It's hard to, to explain that phenomenon because Brad and I aren't. You know, um, we're, we're investors in private technology companies. We're not public company professional investors that, you know, run a hedge fund or spend our life doing that. So it's hard to really understand that kind of public company phenomenon. I would say that, you know, I think, and you and I talked a little bit t today at lunch about the dislocation between the private company valuations that are occurring, which are still at at all time highs in public companies. But I think companies like Groupon, and obviously it's self-serving, but, but also Zynga and, and Facebook and Angie's List is another one that has you know, right. gone up and down. I mean, these are, these are all great businesses, in my opinion, that, that um, were, were built at this really interesting time, largely off the back of the social graph that had got created. But, uh, and, and the phenomenon of that allowed them to get an enormous number of customers very quickly and take whatever service they had to market and, and reach an, an amazingly broad audience. And so I think that's a unique time. And I think as we, we move forward, you'll see kind of what these businesses become. And my guess is investors will uh, either flock back if those businesses are doing well or, or, you know, or not. And how do, you, how do you look at Groupon right now? Because it's your most, you have other public company investments, but it's the one that's gotten you the most attention and, uh, and attention from people. Um, how, do, what do you, how do you look at what's going on in the social space, in the group? On, is it social e-commerce? What, what, what is it moving towards? Well, I, I, here's a way to answer that question without talking about Groupon. Okay. I, I, look, at, I look at the social e-commerce space, or the social, the social space, and I look at, at Facebook, and the fact that they just now are figuring out new ways to harness what they've created for profit. I mean, they're, they're finding ways to better target advertising, to follow you off Facebook and then have a much more productive advertising revenue model. So I think in, in a lot of, of socially um, disseminated businesses, there's a lot of potential that, um, that, that remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. So, but has social been tarnished because of these, not just yours, but Facebook is probably the principal one that, you know, was sort of up to the heavens and now it's, you know, it's only worth 50 billion now, which is sort of astonishing um, to insult that, but it's, you know, with a billion people using it and it's, it's, it's looked widely as a disaster situation for them right now, which is interesting. You, you know, what's interesting is that we, we get lumped, at least in the Groupon side, we get lumped in with this class of social companies, but, w but one of the criticism the Groupon got when it was going public is, it's not social enough. Like, what's social about this, right? At the end of the day, it's not as if you have to talk to a friend before you buy a deal. Um, and so I think people, I'm not even sure at this point people understand what social means in the context of public company investing. I mean, you certainly understand what it means in the context of things, you know, that, that, that you cover, you cover a pretty broad world. But everybody just is like, oh, these are all social companies and, and they're in favor or out of favor. I mean, I think at the end of the day, look, social, I mean, Facebook and Twitter are social by orientation, and, and Zing is a gaming company that happens to do a lot of business on that platform. Right. Um, Groupon really isn't. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't have a relationship that in any way, shape, or form is dependent on Twitter or Facebook or any of the other, you know, kind of quote-unquote social sites like LinkedIn or Tumblr or whatever to do any business. 
but we were all built at this moment in time when the, when the world got very social, when, when ideas and websites spread very quickly, and we took advantage of that. Um, and, and the question, the rhetorical question is, aren't, isn't every company that's on the internet now social? Isn't every company that is selling stuff on the internet using social tools to do a better job at that? Um, you know, you look back in the year 97 to 2001, um, there was e-commerce or not e-commerce, but today Walmart is an online force. Mm -hmm. So there's all these lines that, 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 that get blurred historically. It's just in this case, it was such a insanely fast creation of a social web mm -hmm. that there became perhaps a, you know, there's like, this is social, this is not. And I think we are pretty close to the point where everything's social. So where does that leave it? I mean, where does that leave the concept of, of what you're doing with commerce on the web? Because, you know, you, there's, there's several. There's eBay, there's Amazon, which is the dominant force. There's Groupon, which is still very large, um, uh, not getting appreciated maybe in the public markets, but still a huge and fast-growing company. Um, what, where does that, what, how does that leave the landscape? How do, do you look at your competitors as Walmart? You mentioned Walmart.com, which has had its troubles up and down over the years in, in, in becoming part of e-commerce. Well, I, you know, I think that's the most interesting, I mean, to me, to me that's the most interesting segment. You know, we, we on the light bank side, Brad and I on the light bank side, spend a lot of time trying to figure out what are the themes that we're excited about where we want to be investing money because we now have, I think, like 55 um, private companies that we have either started or helped fund, mm -hmm. um, a big chunk of which are in Chicago. And there's a couple of themes that permeate almost everything we do, one obviously being mobile, we're, you know, we're somewhat fascinated right now with, with, the, with the mobile changes, but the other one being e-commerce. We're in a ton of e-commerce businesses mm -hmm. that we are just in, you know, in little interesting niches. And I think what Groupon has, which you know, we see when we see these smaller companies that are having such a hard time finding distribution, finding customers, finding their audience, finding their voice, what Groupon has is this just amazing platform of like 40 million customers, just this huge volume of subscribers, you know, hundreds of millions of subscribers. And they're able to, um, you know, in credit to Andrew and the team that has built it, I mean, they're, they're able to just reach such a huge audience and promote items in such a unique way. Like the other day, they, they did a Regal um, a cinema deal, I think, and I was you just looking at the numbers, and I think like in a day or two, they sold a million movie tickets. You know, I mean, that's just unbelievable, right, that they can, that they can take an item, whether it's a television or whether it's a movie ticket or whether it's, you know, Chinese food and promote it through that, that promotional distribution channel. And I think you're going to see over time, I, you know, you could, it's a little bit, you know, you know, again, we were talking this in lunch, it's a little bit like you can start to see the e-commerce landscape evolving where you're going to have maybe Amazon is long-term the Walmart of the web, but, you know, maybe Groupon is the Costco of the web or whatever the, the, uh, the appropriate analogy is. You're going to sell is. large amounts of potato chips? You'll just, you, you'll, see, you'll just see, I think you'll see these great e-commerce companies like eBay and like Amazon and like Groupon start to find their long-term niche and, and, and in the mind of customers, you know, where they fit. Right now, I, when people think of Groupon, I think they think unbeatable prices on a, a, a narrow selection of predominantly services and also goods and travel. And I think over time, hopefully, there's this relationship between Groupon and its audience where, you know, I as a consumer, I, you know, I'm going to say, look, if I'm looking for Sony model number X, Y, Z, whatever it is, I might go to Amazon because I know they have this incredible breadth of selection. But if I just want a TV and I want the best price I can get, and I, I know and I trust Groupon, I know it's going to get there quick, and I know they're going to stand behind it, I'm going to go to Groupon. I think it's very powerful. They can, they can serve go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to talk, I'm going to get off of Groupon for a second because I want to talk, we have just a short amount of time. But when you're doing this as an investor, you, you had a public company experience and you are also private company investors um, it competing in this, this area of high valuations and stuff like that. What are the key things right now you think are important to think about as investors, each of you, very briefly? What, the, what you're looking at, what you think are the key. I mean, you said mobile. I mean, that's the big expression in Silicon Valley when everyone has to say mobile first, even if they're, they have no mobility whatsoever, <laughs> um, which is, you know, that's the, it's actually a very truism, but it's at the same time something people are latching on to. Um, they're moving off of social. They're, they're not, they're trying to take the word social out of things. What are you guys looking for? What are the key things? I mean, um, I still think that there, uh, there's a lot of room to build, um, to, to build segment leaders in e-commerce. So I, I think that if you look at the, the, the percentage of transactions that take place online versus offline, it's minuscule in most, segment, uh, in most categories. So there's big opportunities to define leadership in those spaces. 
uh, through the experience of Groupon, we understand now growing a global company. And there are global opportunities where you can disseminate an idea, disseminate a business model around the world quickly, more quickly than ever. And I think that a lot of what we have recently focused on involves helping local things, merchants, situations um, come online. I think that's still very inefficient, and there's an opportunity now to make that efficient very quick. And you know what I what I what I'll add to that I think is Bruce Brett, obviously obviously that's the what we invest in. But on the mobile side, people talk about mobile. I wrote a, a blog post on this not long ago. People talk about mobile. To your point, it's become the catchword like social was a few years ago. And I think they it's it's kind of funny just to understand mobile. We we don't think of mobile as like this. Oh, this is a device, and you know this is an app, or this is a site that's you know that can be ported to the device. I I tend to think of mobile as a, a state of existence, like. And that's what I think is really so powerful about Groupon's opportunity to be a big mobile commerce um, player is that by its very nature, it was designed to be consumed when you're mobile, when you're on the go, right? You know, another great analogy is you're at a hotel and, you know, you have a bad night's sleep, you wake up, your, your neck hurts, you're getting in a cab or you're getting on the train and you're like, God, I, need, I just want to buy a, a new foam pillow. You got to go somewhere and, and have somebody present to you in a curated fashion one or two or three really great foam pillows at a great price that you can instantaneously purchase when you're like moving. And what's that experience of mobility like, and how do you transact? Mm -hmm. And I I've think never wanted to buy a foam pillow on the move, but okay. you, you 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 might not, but you know people do, right? And, and I think more and more, what's amazing is what they're consuming mobily. Mm -hmm. is is unique and people trust the fact that when you know that they want instantaneous gratification they want to be presented it really fast it's got to be super visual they got to be able to click one button and buy it that the trust the source all these things make for a mobile commerce experience mm -hmm. and I think um, you know so we look when we look at companies we think not just hey do they have a app but were they designed to actually conduct this transaction or fulfill this service when they're when you're on the go. I see. Two more quick questions. What do you think is overhyped right now in the, in the investing space? <laughs> huh, you laughed. Something popped into your head, I know. Do you want to take that one? I mean, overhyped in the investing, well, I think, I think that there's, there's way inflated valuations currently in the payment space. Okay. I think that there is radical disruption taking place in the world of payments, but, um, Private companies, uh, startups are being given credit for disruption, but ultimately the, the Goliaths in the room, Amex and, and the like, are going to be in the payments game, and therefore I think there's a dislocation in valuations, public versus private. Okay, that's good. Last question, you get to have it. You could take something back over the last experience, what would it be? And, and what, would, what have you done you think, I don't care what people think, I, that was the right thing to do? I mean. You know, it's hard, it's hard to say, it's hard to be a Monday morning quarterback and say you, you would do this different or not do it different. We were asked the other day, you know, are, are, we, are we happy that we went public and didn't, didn't sell the company? I mean, to Google. I don't think we have, I don't think, um, at least for me personally, I don't have a, any, any one thing that stands out as a great regret. I certainly, I certainly uh, did not expect that not, and I am still am amazed today as you look at Facebook and look at Zynga that this class of companies is getting the attention that they're getting and, and at times the scrutiny. But the attention is overwhelming where you'll see, you know, you could see five or ten articles a day and you're just not even sure what people are writing about any longer. It's just nonstop. Mm -hmm. And so I think I didn't really understand when we went public, when we decided to go public, that it would be that, that it would have that kind of attention. I think the media phenomenon was unknown. And if I could go back in time, I would have at least liked to have that conversation at a board level. And we had, you know, as you know, you know a lot of our board members are unbelievable people. None of us had any idea, and I don't think, by the way, I don't think Facebook had any idea when they decided to go public that it would get this kind of attention, or maybe they did, but. Well, they had a movie about them. So. Yeah, well, they probably did. But um, <laughs> we, we didn't have a movie about us, so we certainly didn't have any idea. Coming and I think, soon. you know, that's been, that's been, that's been um, you know, that's been, uh, you know, kind of unfortunate. Well, now you know. Now we know. Now you know. Will you take a company public again? Will I take a company public again? Um, I would. I would prefer. Um, I think I would prefer. I prefer the private life m more. Okay. I'm in today's environment, and I think we only have one other company really that, in our world, you know, Brad and I have have these four bigger companies, and Media Ocean's the only one left that's kind of of that 
current big size today that could go public. The rest, we're really just investing through LightBank. And so even if they go public, it's not like we're taking them public. It's really that they might, we might own stock in a company that goes public. Right. Um, and I don't know what MediaOcean will do. You know, it's an amazing company, and so maybe it will go it public. It's a fascinating and that'll be company. For. Well, thanks. Well, don't worry. Everyone's paying attention to Honey Boo Boo now, so maybe they'll <laughs> stop paying attention to you. Anyway, thank you very no, much. You guys have been you. great. Thanks. thanks. <laughs> Thank you.